take a look at reorder point processing. In X3, you have three methods for X3 to generate reorder suggestions for materials needed or work orders needed to be planned. You have MRP processing, and then you have statistical reordering, which has two, two types within it, reorder point or by period. We're looking at reorder point. That's the most commonly used um, when not using MRP for just like distribution companies that don't do work orders. So <clears throat> the basis of this is set up with the product, and we're going to take a look at the product and the setup for that. So we have a product record here, and then we have a product site record. It's in the product site record within the planning section, but we specify the reordering mode. Okay, Our options are by MRP, MPS, reorder point, by period, we're with reorder points. We can have um, safety stock. We can have we need to reorder threshold. Okay, if we, if we want to, we need to we will put a reorder threshold, meaning anything below this point, and we're going to reorder uh, maximum stock so we don't you know exceed too much in our warehouse more than we want. And the economic order quantity is going to be a suggestion amount. So I'm going to fill in just some manual values here. So safety stock is 10, reorder threshold is 10, maximum stock will be 100, and economic order quantity we'll say is 5. And then we have technical lot also, which I'm going to say is 1. Economic order quantity is going to suggest first in increments of 5s, and then our technical lot are increments above that. So it will allow us to do 5, then 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Um, so that's how this works. If our economic order quantity were 100 and this were 20, then we would our suggested order would start at 100 and um, go in increments of 20 until we hit the next 100. So we're just going to use 5 and 1 for now. And our safety, our uh, economic order quantity actually must be above our safety stock level or else we'll get an error. So that's the setup on that. That's all we need to focus on. So now I'm going to exit the product function and I'm going to go into reorder processing here. One other thing I want to cover on the product site record in terms of reorder processing, let me jump back to the product site record. We have this calculated data section. Now what this is, is when I run my statistical reordering, it will calculate numbers based on stock history um, to make suggestions for what these numbers should be. Then we can use these if we want not sure why this is blank, to populate the numbers we just filled in on the product site record, the safety stock we order threshold. So this is manual entry data, this is calculated data. So keep this in mind for our next step, because our next step, we're going to do reorder processing. So we're using reorder point, It'll calculate this as well. We could have products in both categories. Everything we have set up now is reorder points. So we're going to focus on that. And then this is where our calculation basis, we can choose entered or calculated. Now, depending on what we use here, if we use entered, it's going to use these values. If we choose calculated, We'll recalculate, if we want, these numbers. It's not going to recalculate maximum stock because that's just something you choose. Um, it'll actually calculate the numbers and then create the suggestions based on the calculations. All right. Um, this is really valuable once we have ordering and sales history on, and usage history on products. In this example, we don't have any. So we're going to use the entered basis. Okay, it takes a number of weeks, months before we get enough transaction history 
to be able to generate calculations that are useful. Or we can run the calculations um, and then just go back into the product records and then manually update the manually en entered values based on what's calculated and we can you know vary them slightly. So we're going to run this on the entered basis and to make it quick I'm going to just run it on this one product. You can set this up as a recurring task to run like every 15 minutes if you want. And the product must be an A, B, or C class category. So we ran that. Order point, periodic processing. Now when I look at my log, I can see that it's suggesting that product that I just looked at, we're going to have 10 each. So it's got a purchase order suggestion of 10. Next, we're going to look at a view our purchase suggestions. We search by site here. So now we can see our purchase order suggestions. Here's that one item. If we click on here, we can go to our planning workbench. So here we can see our suggestion to purchase this item. And if we want to buy it, all we got to do is go to plan order. We can change our quantities if we like in here. And order. Now we got our PO created. It's going to use our price list or base price for pricing. Now if we want to order a bunch of things at the same time, we can go to the grouping workbench. And if we clear out the products and suppliers, search again, we'll show everything we need to buy, regardless of vendor. Now this isn't red because we don't have a supplier. But if we could, if we had multiple items, multiple suppliers, we just check them all. Select Generate, and then it'll generate first for all products to all suppliers automatically. 